Welcome to episode two. So in this episode, I'm gonna take you through our first training session. And as always, I had to make some adjustments in our training session. We worked on attacking organization in this first training session. The guys did a great job. However, we had uh, not as much field space. We had some things that we had to work around. So I had to adjust the training so we could get the most out of it as a team. And I will walk you through the training session right now. Again, it was on attacking organization. And we actually followed that up with a video session at night based upon Manchester City and their attacking organization. So normally I would have liked to show them that, but we had physical, we had all kinds of things to do before that. So we actually had the attacking organization training session. The guys went to dinner and then we had a video session on exactly kind of what we're looking for in that attacking organization session. Now, I didn't get through the whole session because I kind of felt that we needed more work. So we started the first part on um, breaking down a team that sits. And then after that, we were gonna to move to the progression of the team, the back line comes out 30 yards and we have 10 seconds to get in behind to speed the play up and to look for a little bit more direct longer balls to, to penetrate quicker. But as it went, I felt that we needed to just kind of focus on that first stage. Today, we're gonna to stay on the attacking game model. Tomorrow, we're not gonna work the defensive game model until next week. And we're getting prepared for our first game on August 17th, so we have about eight days to, to do that. So I will take you through the training session right now. So this is the PDF file of the session that we did on attacking organization. I will make that link available to you shortly for all the training sessions that we do. And, this, I have video clips of each and every exercise that you see here, and that's gonna follow this. So here you see it's five versus three, and it's a rondo type activity. If the team in yellow wins the ball, the five try to press the yellow, the yellow can score on any of the four goals that you see. This grid is probably about 12 by 15. Uh, you could go 15 by 15 for this. And I gave them unlimited touch in this. If you make the grid a little bigger, you can limit your touches. But because the grid is pretty small, uh, I gave them unlimited touch. As you see the yellow score there. This usually, you always wanna have a floater in the middle, so there's always multiple options. You always have to have that floater stay in the middle. You can, these, these guys could feel free to interchange their positions at any time. Now, the only thing that I didn't show you here was they would play for about three minutes and then we would go for two minutes of speed ladder work and we did the speed ladder work and we keep rotating from 5v3 to speed ladder work and we change the yellows every two minutes. Again, now we're gonna work into attacking organization and here you could see two blue plus the gray team is attacking the green team who has to stay 18 yards out from goal, which is marked by a blue cone on the field. They have unlimited time to score. I want them to be patient because it's eight against six. So this is two wingers, two strikers, then you have two center mids in blue, and then you have two gray players who kind of operate as almost the outside left and right back. See how we stretch them? It's important that the winger on the far side, side always stay wide. Um, we encourage, once it's a turnover, it's done. They get three or four possessions each, depending on how quick they lose the ball. So we gave them three or four possessions each. The idea is, can we get this ball wide? If we get it wide, can we overlap? If not, can we can we can the winger play off the forward for and dribble in off the forward little one two combination drive the end line just like there? Can he cross that ball back to score? Again, this is still the same exercise. And eventually, what happens is you will see that after the possessions, the green team will attack the red team who's defending, and that gray team will become the defending team on this side. Again, you can see game model attacking organization with a front four. And now you see how it switched. The gray team is two new blue players now playing with this green team. And they're trying to break down a back four plus two center mids who are screening 
the ball is coming into the forwards. So you can see there is no time limit in this. The progression is move the back four out 30 yards and the attacking team only has 10 seconds to score. And now we put this in a game situation. It's nine versus nine, almost game model, right? Because the field was a little small, so we can't go 10 v 10. But here's the, the rule is because we're working on breaking time down a team that sits, we're working on our attacking organization. Notice, so now green lost the ball. Their entire team must drop. Only two players at a time can come over. There's a, there's a marker that marks the halfway. Only two players can come over the halfway. So now you see actually the gray team is defending. Only two gray players at a time can come over the halfway line. The rest of the team has to form that nice low block. And we're working on breaking down a team that sits, showing a little bit of patience. Make sure that the goalkeeper gets involved. That creates, if you have two center backs who sit back, you always have the goalkeeper, so if they're allowed to send two, it's a three versus two all the time. And again, this is a live game. This involves all four phases of the game. And that concludes the first day of training. Stay tuned for episode three, which will be later on tonight.